Let's return to our mask intro and a variation on the luminance mask created in PI4. After the initial nonlinear stretches, we could elect to transform it into a binarized mask. Binarize, available under image, translates all levels of gray to either black or white and makes a great mask for revealing or concealing. Similar to a binarized mask is a range selection mask. Though unlike the previous masks, there's no need to make a duplicate image. Notice that range selection offers a real-time preview, and once opened, you can use it to help tune the upper and lower limit of the mask. RS masks work best on nonlinear images. Unlike the prior methods, range selection offers a type of feathering. Fuzziness softens the transition between masked and unmasked regions, and smoothness blurs the edges between them. When satisfied, apply range selection directly to the image. And here's our mask. Remember what to do? Making the image active, select the mask. You can invert it here if you wish. And there it is. Remember, you can choose to show or hide it, enable or disable it, invert it, or remove it. So long as you keep a mask image open, it can always be reapplied. Getting the hang of it? While you can create a star mask with range selection, there's a specific tool for stars, appropriately named Star Mask. And like many of Pixie's processes, it works well at default settings. To include larger stars, I often need to raise the default scale to 8. There are lots of settings to experiment with, but they are well documented, and again, each process provides a lot of guidance in mouse overs. Here's a great trick for evaluating a star mask. Match the zoom levels of the image and the potential mask. Then drag the mask directly over the image without releasing the mouse. The mask stays translucent, allowing you to see if you've captured all of the stars underneath. Lastly are built-in masks, and we'll see one when we get to ACDNR. We'll see mask building in action throughout the series. So far, we've seen individual processes applied to single images. When we get to pre-processing, we'll use several processes designed for batch processing. But for everything else, there's the image container and the process container. The image container is available with a right click on the desktop and lets us apply one process to many images at once. Load images here. Select the folder you wish the new processed images to be written to. Now this may seem counterintuitive. Rather than drag a new instance to the container, drag the containers icon to the tool.
to batch process the images. The process container lets us perform multiple processes on a single image. This container is available here. Drag the new instance icons of whichever process you wish to run in sequence here. As you can see, it's capable of many. You can reorder them, enable or disable them, and delete them without resetting. When you're ready, drag the NI to the image, and you're done. What if you want to perform multiple processes on multiple images? Use both containers. With your images loaded to the image container, drag its NI to the process container's bottom bar. These processes have now been applied to these images. We hope you've enjoyed this PixInsight primer. You should soon be able to navigate the workspace comfortably. That's right, I said workspace. Now that we know there are multiple ones available to us, we can use the words workspace, desktop, and UI interchangeably. Let's start at the very beginning with the first of our S's, stack.